as a young career, I wish I took that advice, get out of your bubble and learn about as many people and about as many things as you can, whether you agree with them or not. Jobs in ad tech. If you're looking for a new role in the industry, there's only one place to go. Free job listing for all recruiters and talent acquisition managers until September. Go to jobsinadtech.com today. Jobs in ad tech. Hello and welcome to the shiny new object podcast. My name is Tom Ollerton. I'm the founder of Automated Creative, which is the creative effectiveness platform. But we are not talking about that. We're doing a podcast with a guy called Brian Costello, who I had a really lovely call with to prep for this conversation. And he is the performance-driven marketing leader at General Motors. So Brian, for anyone who doesn't know who you are and what you do, could you give us a very brief background of your career? Yes. Hi, Tom. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, my career is... Um uh, fairly, um, I, I would say some people would say all over the place. I would say it's planned, but uh, my background is primarily in media, marketing. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I've started four companies in the past. Um, I am focused primarily on performance of brands um, and driving revenue and business results through using data and smart thinking. Um, I'm currently at General Motors. I was previously at Staples and uh, Shark Ninja before that. Um, and I've had my own agency, um, a couple of them in the past as well. Right. Brian, I have a very high expectation of the quality of your content, if that's the case. And which question did you want to, me to ask you from that the list, the magic list of secret questions that all guests get? Well, you know, I'm uh, a bit of a, a, a an old guy. So the thing that jumped out at me was the advice that you would give a smart, driven student who's trying to get into the industry. Fantastic. Let's hear that then. Yeah, You know, I think the key part is um, I, I've interviewed thousands of people over my career. I've, I've hired many hundreds, I would say, maybe more. And the thing that uh, I always try to get people to really understand is first, you do want to take the small jobs. I know everybody wants to take sort of the job that they can talk to their friends about and tell you how great you're doing and something really interesting and exciting. I find if you took the small job, right, if you do the dirty stuff and you ask for doing it, um, that's the stuff that gets people like me really interested in people like you. Um, you know, so you, you got to do the research on the companies that you're real focused on and really understanding everything about them. I would say my one very basic research. I want somebody to come in and say, hey, I saw that you took private equity investment recently. How's that changed the company? Did the leadership take an earn out? Um, things like that. That really makes me excited. And it's the stuff like that that gets, um, gets you, I think, going into the direction of building a career, right? Come in early, work late, ask for the junkie jobs, ask a lot of questions, but do your research. Figure out how to hone your presentation skills. Ask for advice. Go for a, go to a lot of events if you can. Sometimes you can't. I understand. And I think the biggest thing is get out of your bubble. I think we all live in a bubble of the same types of people because we like to focus on being around people like us. And I think that's the biggest mistake in marketing. And as a young career, I wish I took that advice. Get out of your bubble and learn about as many people and about as many things as you can, whether you whether you agree with them or not. And then finally, it's sort of like be in person when you can. Some companies are still remote. I happen to be a remote employee, but I go into the office when I can um, because I think that in-person connection at your young career is something that you, you can't you can, you just can't replicate. And if you can't get in the office, then just find humans. Just get out there and find humans to talk to and and ask a lot of questions of. Um, I'll stop there for a second. No, it's, it's all really good stuff. I then thought about that in terms of that people starting their career. Yeah, I just think that all, like my entire career, whether you perceive that as good or bad, is entirely based on people that I met. And if I hadn't met some of the key people at those key times, then it wouldn't have followed this path. It would have followed a different one, sure. But I that's, never thought about it. That's, uh, thanks for sharing that, Brian. But we're going to move on from student advice and, and career advice to marketing advice. So what is your top marketing tip? 
What is the one silver bullet bit of advice that you always give that you know always works? You know, the, the thing, um, well, one measurement, obviously, I think you have to always think about what am I going to do to prove that the money I spent to the senior leadership actually did anything? I mean, that singular question and, and not just like glazing over it. And I know it's kind of boring for some folks, especially on the creative side. And I, I consider myself a creative person. Um, but what I find is it's, it's a question that I wish I asked a lot more in the past and I ask constantly now. It doesn't mean I have to get to the nitty gritty, this dollar brought in this sale. But what it does mean is I have to have a view that says, can I bring receipts and proof? I like to use that, those two words, proof and receipts. When I'm in a C-level conversation and they ask the simple question, well, what did this do for us? Can you prove it? If I can have receipts and I can have proof, then at least have something that says they're not coming for my money, the budget, or I'm, I'm, I'm doing something for the business. I'm really making a change for the business and I can prove it. Um, and that can be through uh, advanced measurement like MMMs or MTA or just simple conversion metrics. But there's got to be something behind your brilliant thinking and your awesome creative um, that does say, hey, I got something from this. That's maybe beyond just brand health, right? I think brand health is a really important metric. You have to build your brand. You have to get people really focused on it. You have to get people excited about it, right? That's a metric too, right? How do I measure that? But have, have markers that say, this did this and it got us this is the thing I, I focus on most. So we're going to now talk about your shiny new object. So what have you chosen as your shiny new object and why do you think it represents the future of the industry? Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. Originally, I was thinking um, the shiny new object is not the current thing. And then the thing I'm most fascinated about is sort of the current thing. But I would argue that it's not the current thing. It's the interesting thing. And Come on, Brian. Different... Get to it. What is it? Okay. Uh, it's generative AI, which I know all everybody's talking about. But specifically, can, can, I, can I tell you my little pet hate about Gen AI? Right? Yeah, yeah. I was I was at Can, I was at Madfest uh, shortly after, and when anyone mentions Gen AI, everyone has to mention that everyone's mentioning it. It's like, of course, everyone's mentioning it. Oh, it's so interesting. <laughs> don't you, they don't you don't have to qualify that everyone's talking about it because everyone's also talking about everyone's talking about it. It drives me nuts. Anyway, Gen AI, Brian, I can't wait it's to hear what you got to say. Exactly interesting, right? If you and in the past, I don't think I thought it would be as interesting. And what really, when I started playing with some of these tools like Mid Journey and Sector and these tools that are just fascinating to me in the sense that how it's going to impact every industry, especially on the creative side, especially on the marketing side. The idea that this content generation and this new way of creating sort of um, a creative process is going to change our business in a major way, not even just a little way. I think it's going to change it in, in such a major way when you think about simple things like text to image and recoloring, you know, images, uh, you know, experimentation, um, how it's going to solve the problem of some of the, the busy work that we're all stuck with, like uh, sizing and, and, and platform-specific creative um, and, and, and the text within your, your, your sites and your advertising, everything there is going to improve if you train it to improve, right? I think it's still one of those things where it needs a lot of playing with and a lot of work. But every time I interact with generative AI, especially on the, on the content creation side, I'm just incredibly fascinated about how good it is, maybe not perfect and maybe not the best, of, uh, but still way better than anything I could have ever done. This episode of the Shiny New Object podcast is brought to you in partnership with Madfest. Whether it's live in London or streamed online to the global marketing community, you can always expect a distinctive and daring blend of fast-paced content, startup innovation pitches, and unconventional entertainment from Madfest events. You'll find me causing trouble on stage, recording live versions of this podcast, and sharing a beer with the nicest 
the most influential people in marketing. Check it out at www.madfestlondon.com. One of the most amazing things about Gen AI, Gen AI, to your point, is how good it is it is at getting 98% of the way there. Like copy images and some of the platforms that you mentioned, right? It's easy and it's cheap and it's fast, which makes it amazing, right? But there's also no barrier to entry, which means everyone can use it. So my view is that it's only a disadvantage not to use it as opposed to an advantage to use it. Like if you can save 20% on production, so can the agency next door. If you can write better SEO copy, so can the brand next door. So my thing is, is that ultimately it'll be the creativity of the person using the, using it that counts, which isn't actually that different to where we are pre-gen AI, that it's the quality of the creative that really matters. So I'd love to get your view on that. I think you're right. I think ultimately it's going to need, and I think that's what I meant by the training of it, right? You still need really, really smart human beings with a, an eye for detail and creativity to get it to the level where I think people will want to use it. But I also think that it, it changes how they think. I think it creates way more opportunity for those really smart people to focus on the things that they're just really good with, good at, which is innovation and thinking and get them out of the 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 um the process stuff that a lot of people don't like um it the workflow right i think it will change the workflow and it gives uh folks a lot more flexibility in that regard and i think you can actually create a lot more ideas when you feed it the right way and you train it the right way but i i'm 100 percent on board with the fact that you still have to be a really smart human doesn't mean by the way we're going to have that I think there'll just be a lot of folks using it and a lot of it will be real junk. Um, and it will just be the way, but it, how's that change anything, right? It's the same today. Yeah, yeah. You're just narrowing it down. So what amazed me today is I was uh, putting a poll on LinkedIn for another show I do called Advertisers Watching Ads. And I noticed like a new icon on the LinkedIn create a message and they've got a Gen AI post maker. So you go, I want to, picture with some sad dogs crying on computers and the strap line is you know dogs are cooler than cats say whatever and, it, and again i had to play with it and, it and it wasn't amazing but linkedin of, of all people do you know what i mean i was just like god they, they, even these guys are doing it and i thought like oh i don't know it needs some playing with it but it's gonna be everywhere on everything like every you know your apples your amazon your google's facebook everyone's gonna have an llm they'll be everywhere they'll be baked into everything so my, my question to you is yes it's gonna be big yes it's gonna change but what is brian costello using it for for work today for me um the thing I'm most intrigued with is that creative element right so I think large enterprises really struggle with um for instance creating uh, not only platform specific creative, but they're really struggling with um, dynamic creative and creative based on certain audiences and things of that nature. It costs a lot. And it costs a lot because large, large enterprises have really expensive agencies um, and creative agencies that are sort of used to doing big bucks, you know, creative splash campaigns right whether it be a big linear television commercial with a you know a famous director down to um much too expensive creative um for you know display and social um i think when you look at the enterprise side they're really efficient at getting contracts with agencies but i don't know how efficient they are at actually doing stuff that this can do so where I'm most intrigued with is, can you get stuff out? Can you test? Can you, can you experiment faster? Um, and I think if you change the mindset to say, it's okay to go out with something not absolutely perfect that didn't go through 97 rounds of, of, of creative and everything else, and just to see what happens, to me, that's really interesting. So I, I, I really think that, um, you know, perfect is, is the enemy of, 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 of of good and i think sometimes good is good enough um especially if you're in the experimentation and testing phase um so to me that's the place that is most interesting i think content creation especially on the b2b side it sounds boring because 
I think a lot of people approach B2B as sort of like, oh, it's, you know, it's a little boring. It's a little staid. But um, I think businesses, again, enterprises struggle with creating content efficiently. Um, they have really smart people that know the business. They're just not necessarily good at building really good, fun, interesting content that gets you excited. And so can, can that generative piece help out with at least the tools to get it there and go out? Yeah, and, and that view obviously sits very close with automated creatives, belief and, and products. And so it's refreshing to hear you talk about using this technology to do doing something different. Because the thing that irates me about this industry is people are going, hey, we can do everything faster and cheaper. That's cool. But if everyone does the same faster and cheaper thing, you can end up, it's a zero sum game, right? Whereas what you're talking about is like, right, how can you make imperfect things very quickly to test, see what works? That's absolutely our vision. And so it's refreshing to hear someone else say that on this podcast, which doesn't happen very often. So thank you. Right, Brian. So we're coming up on time, unfortunately. I'm sure there'll be lots of people that want to speak to you. So where can they do that? And what makes a brilliant outreach message to you? Oh, this is good. Um, LinkedIn is probably the best way. Brian Costello, I'm on LinkedIn. I work for General Motors. It's easy to find me. I don't have a Twitter account. I know that's horrible for a marketer, but I just don't. Um, you have an X so, account, is what you're saying. Oh, an X account. Excuse me. You're right. Uh, <laughs> LinkedIn um, LinkedIn is the best place. Um, just say something useful to me. Um, I get. I would say I get so many pitches. Um, in LinkedIn, it's insane. Uh, I was going through it this morning and I couldn't believe it. But um, did I meet you? Did I did I say anything interesting to you? Do you see anything that's interesting to me? I'm always curious. I'll never, I'll tr- hopefully not blow you off. I usually do respond. Um, but I just want to hear something interesting that's relevant to me uh, today um, from, a, from like a partners and vendors. And now obviously from people from brands, anybody that just wants to reach out. I speak at a lot of events. Um, uh, and so you can always find me at something like brand innovators or one of the, um, one of the, uh, events, especially around the Boston and new England area where I happen to live. Brilliant. Well, look, Brian, that's an excellent guide for anyone trying to get in touch with you. And thanks for sharing your passionate views about Gen AI, Gen AI and receipts and proof and uh, taking on the small jobs. That was fantastic. I appreciate it, Tom. Hi, just before you go, I'd really appreciate it if you could take the time to write a review of the Shiny New Object Podcast on Apple Podcasts or iTunes, whatever it's called these days, or whichever podcast provider you use. We're an indie podcast, so it would go a long way for us if you could just share the word and give us a bit of a support on those channels. That would just be fantastic. If you haven't got time, that's also cool. And yeah, if you could tell your colleagues about the podcast and also, if possible, don't forget to subscribe. And I'd love to hear your feedback uh, if you'd like to speak on the podcast or be a guest or you think I'm asking the wrong questions, anything. I'd be super interested to hear what you think. So please email me at tom at automatedcreative.net. That's T-O-M at, uh, I'm not going to bother spelling it. Anyway, you'll work it out. Thanks so much.